Hello YouTubers, today we have 2008 Honda Civic manual transmission and my apologies this video is starting in the middle of the job but it was a long pass before I figured out what's going on. Basically the complaint was that it's super hard to get it into a gear when engine is running so you need to put lots and lots of pressure and when I tried was the engine off the gears went in without any issues so it was leading us to the conclusion that something wrong with the clutch normally there is a reservoir clutch reservoir in this corner little guy this is the reservoir and it supplies the clutch master cylinder where it's connected to the pedal clutch pedal so the, there is a rod so you push you push the master cylinder the fluid goes, 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 and then it comes to the your clutch slave cylinder. And we saw that this reservoir was empty, so obviously the air got into the system. So I decided to bleed it. Uh, so to bleed, procedure is very similar as to the brake. Uh, so you can easily reuse the vacuum pump on this bleeder, or you just press the clutch, hold it, let the fluid out close it, release the clutch and keep going. In our case, as soon as I released this and there was a little bit of fluid came out, the clutch pedal went down and never came back. So basically, at that point I was so confused, I didn't realize what happened. The only thing that could have explained that behavior would be the air in the system. So I was trying to with the system and you can see there is the new master uh, slave cylinder and there is a little bit of play so with the clutch on the motor released you can still push it with your finger so you can get some fluid movement so I was trying to bleed it for a while there was uh, no success the pedal was still down while doing that I saw that there is a bunch of fluid that was coming out of the slave cylinder and it was kind of held in this boot so all the fluid was leaking coming and stayed in this boot so okay we knew the, the reason why it's leaking so we got new slave cylinder put it back on fill it with this fluid vacuumed it still the same issue the pedal won't return so at that point my only guess was that the spring in the master cylinder that's supposed to push the rod back is broken and whenever when I remove this rod from here basically this rod goes in here that's what I found so the spring was broken into three pieces and was sitting there so there was uh, no pressure for the rod to come back that's why the pedal was staying at the very bottom position how it was working before I'm not sure the only explanation would be when the when this circuit between two cylinders was filled with fluid and there is a quite tense pressure when the clutch is come, come going back basically so I think the clutch was pushing the fluid fluid was pushing this rod out and that's how it was functioning and as soon as we removed that chunk of fluid out of the system there was nothing to push back so we went ahead got the new master cylinder we'll need to move a few pieces around uh, specifically like this connector you see like it's connected with a, with a pin and it actually uh, swivels over here so we'll need to transfer that we'll need to connect our reservoir and as well as we will bench bleed it while we have it on the bench I will try to put everything back together and film it but your clutch master cylinder is 
in that corner where I'm pointing the laser to that hole. So it's way behind the strut assembly. To get to that, you need to remove your brake master cylinder. Uh, also, you need to remove the air filter box. And to get the air filter box, you need to get one, two, three bolts uh, loose on the ECM. Move that out of the way. I saw a video, the guy was removing this panel. I'm not sure if it's required. Like it will probably give you a little bit more access, but I was able to get it out without it. In terms of the panel inside the cab, so there are uh, two nuts holding the cylinder and also a pin that goes through here. Um, that's not too difficult to remove. So at this point, we will just get this assembled and bench bleed it. Okay, so now we need to get this horseshoe out. See how that works. Seems like it's coming up too difficult. And this, I would guess, will come out just like that. So there is a seal. And I believe we got the new seal with the new pump. So let's take a look. Alright, so that seems to be exactly the case. So we'll just put that seal inside make sure that it goes all the way in nice and flush okay seems to be good next we will insert the line and we'll install that horseshoe. Try using channel lock pliers to get this pushed in. And please use gloves and eye protection when you work with the brake fluid. It's, it's quite corrosive and it will burn everything including, including the paint on the car. So also when you work with brake fluid, when you're doing this type of work, make sure that you protect the paint on the car since with all the lines, hoses, filling, bleeding, there will be always droplets everywhere. So this seems to be in place. All right, so here is our bench bleeding setup. We have our reservoir full of fluid, goes to the cylinder. Cylinder is pointing uh, down the pedal side so the air can go up then it goes through the line I connected that plastic hose to the end of the line yeah. and then comes back to the reservoir so now we will just start pumping it and you can see there's air coming out So the reason we're doing this is potentially you can bleed it on a vehicle too, but it's super hard to get this full stroke very often. And also if your cylinder is pointing down, there might be some air sitting on here. So. At this point, we'll just be pumping until we can see a solid fluid flow going through that uh, 
plastic line. So I just added a little bit more fluid into the reservoir as the air keeps coming out. And you want to make sure that the end of this transparent plastic hose is always submerged in the fluid. So the air coming out, but it can go back, cannot get back in because there is fluid at the tip at the end of the hose. So just keep pumping. You can see that this reservoir is slowly getting empty. And just add more fluid using DOT3 fluid. You can use DOT4 if you wish, but either or would work fine. Now I can see that there is a resistance in a cylinder, so it means that I'm pumping more fluid than air which is great. And you can see that our plastic line is getting filled with fluid now. Now it's just important to get this topped up regularly so we don't catch any air. All right, so our hose is filled with fluid. There are a few bubbles circulating in the hose, but the piston been pumping for a while. Solidly, you can feel how you push the fluid. So at this point, we should be good. So we will put the cap on the reservoir and we will put the cap on the end of this line so we don't lose too much fluid when we install it back. All right, so I got the cylinder in place. You can see it's in that far corner. I'm just trying to get the light. Oh, it's so tight in here. So that cylinder is over there. So here's this line coming from the cylinder. And the best way to plug it is just to use all dust cap from the bleed screw from your slave cylinder. So we have disconnected it here, just under the battery, as you can see. That was the easiest way to get it out. And also we have placed this reservoir back. So now we will go ahead and actually Reconnect this line. We'll just remove that the dust cap and we'll get it snug. All right, so that flare nut is connected. It's 10 mil, and same is on your slave cylinder. If you need to replace it, just underneath. It's hard to see, it's impossible to see. But that line is connected at the bottom of the slave cylinder, also 10 mil. So to get it tight, the regular wrench is more than enough. But to get it off, you might need a special tool designed for the transmission and uh, clutch brake lines. So I will try to find all the links in the description to the video so you can check those links and find all the tools and parts that you might need. Okay, next, when and while we are under the hood, we will uh, connect back the brake master cylinder. One important thing is to make sure that, sorry, that the rubber seal is inside. So now we should be able just to Put this back on. And there will be a little bit of resistance from the brake lines as well as the reservoir, but that will be just two nuts, and also there is a lock washer under each, so we'll get that back. 
So those were 12 mil nuts and with a long extension it's quite easy to get them back. So next we'll get the reservoir in. So there is a, that slot where it slides in. Just like that. And then there is a place for a little bolt. Just over there. So there's a little bolt like this. And mill will put it in. Okay, now the fun part. So we are in under the dash. This is the clutch pedal over here. And as you can see, there is our master cylinder. I'm trying to show you a better angle. It's super tight in here. So there is a pin that holds the pedal and the cylinder together and it has to come from the door side to the pedal and in. We'll just try to put it in right now. So that pin is installed. Last of things are those two nuts, 12 mil socket. I'm using impact with two extensions to get to that. The nuts are installed. I'm not sure if you will be able to see the other one. Oh yeah, you can. So now we'll go back under the hood. So the clutch master cylinder is installed and now we will Use a vacuum pump, if you have electric one, you can use a manual one, I will leave a link in the description. The manual one, it will take a while. So my suggestion would be, if you don't have the manual one, get some help. So one person pumps the clutch, holds it down, you release the bleed screw on the slave cylinder, let the fluid air out, close it, release the pedal and repeat until you get all the air out uh, with the vacuum pump basically what we are doing we got that little bleed, bleeder screw excuse me uh, a bit loose not too much because if it's too much loose it will suck too much air on a thread alternatively you can use the teflon tape to get it sealed better but we don't worry about that too much so the fluid is coming from there all the way down to the vacuum pump considering the level of the reservoir and the level of the uh, slave cylinder it potentially will eventually will bleed by gravity by itself too but we will use the pump to pump it okay so we'll turn on the pump and you can see that it's Pulling the fluid together with some air. And that's what we need. So when we get that reservoir low, we will fill it up, get it to low point again. While it pumps, we will close the bleed screw and we'll top up the uh, reservoir at the very last point. Vacuum pumps do not like fluid, so we have this fluid catcher basically here. It's still pumping quite well. This level is going down, so we are sucking all the air together with the fluid out of the system. So this is the second reservoir that's going down. So after you started this process, you should not shut off the pump. So you can see I topped up the reservoir again and it's getting low. So at this point, and this is an 8 mil wrench, I will go down and we'll close that. We'll get that screw tight and close the 
fluid flow. So now we can remove the hose to get all the fluid. And only now we can shut off the pump. So now we come inside and we try the clutch paddle and it feels good. It's nice and stiff. So we will put the battery air intake back, the battery, and we'll test it. Also, don't forget to put your fluid reservoir cap on as soon as possible so to avoid any moisture getting inside. Okay, so next we will get this harness in place. There are those green plastic clips. It will put one side and another side on the other clip. Just slide them on. Okay, so we need to make sure that this ECU go in easily next we will connect the filter box so there's two one rubber connector to the air to the throttle body and another one just goes to the head low cover so we need to connect this one this one the box goes on this stud there is rubber bushing the most difficult part was to and slide it out. Okay, let's give it a try. So there's one bolt on this side, uh, then that rubber bushing that goes over that stud over there. And there will be another bolt at the front. So now we'll just slowly need to push it in. It's going to catch in every possible side. That's the beauty of working on a small car like this. So not enough room for anything. the hose clamp out of that throttle body rubber connector let's see if I can get it okay the box is in it was painful to get everything connected at the same time so I lost this clamp I had to replace it hose clamp so now we tie this bolt and there is another bolt just on the far right corner and for that we will use a swivel on extension let's grab that and try to reach it from the top Need to find to get it started somehow first. You would think that it it aligns with the hole, considering that other two are connected. Here it is. So next we will attach the ECU, so there are three 10 mil bolts, just change the angle a bit, so one is closer to the cap, 
The other two are on the other side, closer to the bumper. So the only reason why we had to remove this was because the air box wasn't coming out. And also it has a nice plastic cover that just slides on top and there are two clips at the bottom. Okay, so what's next? Next we will put this battery tray in L shape. And this side goes towards the front. And goes, the battery will go inside. Next, we'll put this plastic shield around the battery. Just like that. And we will get it secure with those hooks and a strap on top. So there are two loops on each side. So we'll just put Put those hooks through the loops and bring them up. Just like that. Now we can secure it with the 10 mil nut on the top. Our battery is set in there solid. So next we will put the filter back in as well as the filter cover. Push those back and the filter in. The cover into the air intake. Clamp it in place as well as we need to connect mass airflow sensor now we should be good to attach the battery leads we'll start with positive and we'll do the negative last Okay, first we will put this dust cap on a bleeder on the slave cylinder. And the last thing we will put this battery terminal cover. And at this point, sounds like it's time for a test drive. Okay, so the first test drive showed that the car is not ready. I was not able to get the car into the gear. So the last step, you need to adjust your pedal. Basically, the biggest adjustment is how far this rod will be sticking out or in. When you are under the vehicle or inside the vehicle, there is not much room. So this will be connected to your paddle. This you can get loose. And then most likely that you will need to spin this rod clockwise to push this out. It's really hard 
but there is a trick so if you take this nut all the way here you can use your 14 or 12 mil depends wrench to unscrew it and whenever you're ready you put it back you get it tight so this is one adjustment that you would need to do and if you are able to get where you want to be with this adjustment it's just fine though there is another thing that i will show you in the car so another adjustment is this limit switch or and i think it's actually the uh, switch for the cruise control so that kind of limits how far the pedal goes outside so you can see right now it's hitting it though initially this limit switch was pushed in way more probably like a quarter inch more so at this point on the other side there are just a few beds then it works just fine so we have probably three threads on the inside then you can see how much so on the outside there's probably like a good half inch of thread but this works awesome at this point so it shifts nice nicely uh, the pedal travel is nice so I'm quite happy with the result so thanks for watching please like and subscribe please check the links to all the parts and tools that you might need in the description to the video and as always just do it yourself